happy birthday. Thanks, Queen. Ah! Ah! We're not the same age anymore. I'm so sorry, Queen. I literally, I just feel like although although you gain another year, I'm falling behind <laughs> once more. Don't worry, you'll catch up <laughs> soon enough. Just for those two weeks. It's literally just two weeks between us. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? Remember when we were when I was in college and you moved in with me my final year of college? Yes. And we lived with our third roommate mm-hmm. and we were all March birthdays? Uh-huh. Dude, don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told I think I got her birthday right, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. And I told you, no, I think it's this day. And you were like, No, it's no. not. I've known her longer. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. I distinctly remember. <laughs> But doesn't it feel, I don't know if you feel the same way, but Mm -hmm. almost everyone that I'm super close to, um, they're March birthdays. I feel like most people that I'm close to just have birthdays close to me. Mm -hmm. Is that a thing? I've heard that's a thing. Is it? Because for my family, oh my God, off topic. (laughs) Yeah. Most of our birthdays are very close together. It's like boom, 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 boom. Dude, Mm -hmm. these next like four weeks cake after cake (laughs) i'm I'm already over it dude i was gonna bring a cake today and then i was like if we're gonna drink and then we also had milkshakes our stomach our stomachs we don't need to do that again as someone who (laughs) identifies as lactose oh my god please go watch our (laughs) king of wrath episode where we put our stomachs through the ringer honestly we really did that changed me as a person and here we are today both of us now one year older. Yeah, what one year wiser. Feel? I feel really good. How I was mean, your birthday? It was okay. I mean, I feel like my birthday, uh, well, I don't want to say what I did because mm. that'll let you know where I'm at. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Longitude, I, latitude. Yeah, maybe. exactly. I, I went to an event, basically, let's say that. And mm. the event was not as hyped as I thought it was going to be. But it's okay, mm. though, because honestly, I just relaxed for most of my birthday, so... And your birthday was on a weekend this year, right? Yes, it was. Oh, you're so lucky. I worked on my birthday. <sighs> That's the worst. It's the worst. I remember one time my birthday was like on a Wednesday mm-hmm. when I Wednesday was like one of my busiest days in school mm-hmm. and I hated it. <laughs> I got <sighs> home so late and I was just like, what's the point? But you know what? We are treating ourselves by visiting a friend. Oh, wait, before we do that, I got you a gift. Yes, let me grab it. (laughs) I I feel like your gift was a lot more meaningful than mine is. Because mine is for real, like... Look at how cute the bag (laughs) is. It's uh, daisies and it's pink. Yeah. It's like you know me or something. Very Easter. Okay. Oh. Grab. I was giving... It was giving spring for me. Oh, you're right. But also Jesus' birthday is coming up, so... (laughs) <laughs> um, um, so honestly this gift is for him <laughs> so you're gonna feel two things in there you're gonna feel a big thing and you're gonna feel several little things you only have to take out one of the several little things why what is it well <laughs> because they're all basically the same it's all chocolate but <laughs> Yahira she just works hard all the time what is so this? I wanted you to treat yourself <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> so I got you the biggest care package of um, all the little things first I can't. I can't feel them. <laughs> They're on one side. You'll feel them. They're all together. You work so hard, and I just feel like oh, if you're I like know. me, I don't buy things for myself. So I got you a <gasps> hella oh care package. God. Thank you. Treat she got clean. me eye masks, and it's probably just masks. Oh my god, just you got all me a masks. lot, dude. Because I I feel like when <gasps> I don't have some, I never go and buy myself some. I don't I know if don't, you're the same. I don't. Buy if someone some. has them, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Thank you so much. I can't yeah. wait to use all of these. It's just sheet masks. Yes. Thank you. And then I found a purse that I think is very you, dude. <laughs> This is literally me. Wait, why did you wait until we did the teacher? Oh, shit. <laughs> Put it back. She got me this really cute Edgar Allan Poe purse. Dude, I oh, love this. Dude, I know this how much never you love. Hold on. Hold on. I got I to gotta show it off. Please watch our YouTube video because you'll see it's this him. purse. him. He's king. It's him on one side and on the other. It's the raven. Oh, dude. Thank you so much. You yeah. know me so well. I love it so much. I can't wait to estrenarla. <laughs> dude, oh my gosh. 
Yeah. Needs to know. wear it for the first time. Right? Yeah, I was like, That's yeah. what it means, right? Like, to yeah, wear try it, it out. Try it out for the time. first time, yeah. I was going to be like, damn, that bilingual podcast? <laughs> really? Muy, um... Muy bilingual. <laughs> muy padre. <laughs> muy padre. <laughs> Someone who's barely taking first year Spanish is like, a lot of father? Like, what yeah, does she wait, what mean is by she, that? What does she mean by that? <laughs> but yes... For, I guess, my birthday episode, we are going to be visiting an old friend, which is so interesting because last year we started off the year very strong with Mm -hmm. Danielle L. Jens' book, The Bridge Kingdom, or two books, and The Trader Queen, and now we're visiting an old friend. And do you think visiting an old friend can fix your life? Yes, I do. Welcome to the Book Fix Podcast, the podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Chelly. And I'm your host, Yahida. And here is the book. It's so beautiful. And look at the sides. It's Dude. blue. They're glittery. I only knew this book was coming out because you told me. How did I find out again? Were you on Amazon? Is that what it was? No. Okay. It's because I joined a like book page a book discussion page thing and Mm. people give recommendations on there and uh somebody mentioned that this book was coming out to me and i was like i love danielle l jensen so i have to read it so i pre-ordered it i it's crazy because for those of you who have not been following us last year the first book we read in january was Mm -hmm. daniel l jensen's the bridge kingdom Mm -hmm. and dude it was almost book of the year yeah and that was our first book Mm -hmm. and that's huge Mm -hmm. and i remember i think it was like january 2nd or january 3rd i was like okay i'm gonna just i'm I'm just gonna wait i did pick it as my book of the year because i was like juggling between three different ones me too it was hard, but was hard. dude, the fact that that book stuck with us for so long, mm-hmm. I feel like I need to go back and reread that book. So yeah, the fact that too. she wrote this, I was like, hell yeah, mm-hmm. I am so ready. And I really like following authors I like in their new journeys. What other author do you think you would follow because of this podcast and because of things that you've enjoyed in the past? I know your answer. Who? Rafael Nicolás. Was, how did you know that? I knew that. Can you guess one for me? Um... Carissa Broadbent, mm-hmm. the head of Mafia. Of course. Um, it's been a while, but yes. Who else would we follow? I'm thinking for both of us. Oh, um, oh my gosh. What was her name? Rebecca, Rebecca Ross. Ross. Yeah, we would follow Rebecca Ross. Dude, but it's nice because uh, we've said it before with this podcast. Now we're caught up. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it takes a long time to get to that point mm-hmm. with books, especially. But we're caught up. I we're know. in it now. I feel like we're doing really good. In it's terms weird. of our book reads. Mm-hmm. But this might be getting boring for the listeners. So why don't we just start talking about the book? Yeah. So again, it's titled A Fate Inked in Blood. And it's a, uh, a book- Norse mythology. Mm-hmm. That- Based on Norse mythology norse mythology yes it's inspired by that and it's also like a viking romanticy and i just have never read a viking romance but it's so funny because i remember stumbling on this video this was a long time ago Mm -hmm. that was like viking romances that's where it's at and i remember thinking like oh i need to remember this because i really want to read a viking romance and look at that it landed on my feet (laughs) because i (laughs) forgot about that video well you let me borrow your copy Mm -hmm. i was I will say, I was a little bummed you didn't write in it. Dude, I was so... uh, Because I think this was the second book I read in in our batch. And I was like, oh my god. If I keep... If I write on it, I'm gonna slow down too much. Mm -hmm. I was in it. So I borrowed Yahira's book. Mm -hmm. And I do want to say that I wrote in this. Mm -hmm. And I realized that anytime I write notes in books, all I write is, bitch, fuck, (laughs) what the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what I write. What did I write? Uh, We'll talk about it. Actually, we'll just talk about it later. like, hello? (laughs) (laughs) Um, this book is so dense. Mm-hmm. So I just want to start off by saying that if we get these names wrong, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wrote them down, but my notes aren't, I don't think they're that. Look at the first one. Snorri? Yeah, Snorri. And I put Sugar Daddy. What the fuck? Who's Snorri? <laughs> the, the, the dad? dad the, the dad? she marries. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, don't, I couldn't remember his name. Dude. Uh, Didn't they call him something else? Yeah, he has two names. Snorri Jarl, right? Oh, Jarl. That's what it was. Jarl is the type of people that they are yes. let, let me start off by introducing our main character whose name freya. is not Feyre. it's freya freya mm-hmm. so freya she is just like that badass bitch mm-hmm. and you can tell immediately because she just does 
whatever the fuck she needs to do and doesn't have to rely on any man. Mm -hmm. Not even her fucking husband. Braggy. 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 Um, First of all, I'm so sorry in advance. These pronunciations... They're gonna be rough. <laughs> I'm, I listened to the audiobook. It's groggy. It is. I think. Well, watch me be wrong. But um, <laughs> the so, audiobook was wrong. So she's over here being a badass bitch. But then, like, because I think her job. Well, it, correct me if I'm wrong. But be, first of all, before we continue, basically, some of these people are like godlike because yes. they have like drops of god blood in mm-hmm. them so it gives them special abilities mm-hmm. and her husband if i remember correctly he had something to do with the fish right yeah he would bring in fish and it would feed the village and, and it seems like a very heroic thing to do but he's a fucking asshole yes. and it, it's definitely something that gets to his head he's just like yeah these people need me these people love me but mm-hmm. he's such an asshole to his wife mm-hmm. freya and freya has always wanted more for her life and she knows that she's meant for more and in the beginning we don't really know what's going on with her but you could tell like there's something else that this girl was meant to do i thought it was really funny how she was over here describing her life and she's like yeah my bitch of a husband who keeps trying to have kids with me but i'd be putting lemon in that shit Dude, I was like, what the fuck? Doesn't that hurt? That would hurt. Oh, my God. But that just shows the commitment to how much she doesn't want to have kids with him. Mm-hmm. And Oh, yeah, that would have been hell. And so Vragi puts her in her place, basically, because she mm-hmm. tries going like, I don't need to fucking listen to you. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, yeah, you're my wife and you're not doing a really good job. All you are is a face. You don't even have like any substance to you. Also, he's he's definitely the type of man who always like has to mansplain shit. That oh, she I obviously know. does better than him. Like for example, she guts the fish for him. Mhm. And he's just like, well, if you would do it this way, it would be more efficient. And she's like, I think I know what the fuck yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> And I put, oh, he would have a man bun. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has a man bun. I was not here for him mm-hmm. at all. And as soon as he left home, because he, I think he was angry and he left. Mm-hmm. I was like, good fucking bye. Yeah. I did not want this man in this story. Vragi, like, summons a lot of fish, like, too much. Not He, he does this thing where he'll bring an excess of food and most of it ends up going bad. And then mm-hmm. he's like... Uh, okay, sell it for triple. I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. And so she's over here like, oh, he's such a fucking bitch. And she's grabbing all these fish and she, throwing them back into the ocean. Yeah, she's trying to, you know, not let all these fish go to waste. And there is a man that's standing there that I think when she throws a fish, it hits him in the face. <laughs> yeah, it does. Right? And he's just like, ow. <laughs> I thought their first meeting was really funny because mm-hmm. they they immediately had like a really good banter between them where she could joke with him freely yeah. because obviously her husband's a little bitch so mm-hmm. she can't joke with him because he takes everything too seriously but this stranger is like obviously very smitten by her i don't yeah. know he's kind of like down for her and it was so funny because it was such a short meeting and he was like um you have a husband and he's like she's like what? He, he did that shit can he fight <laughs> Where is he so I can fucking kill him? And it's like, oh my fucking gosh, it's Tuesday. Please. (laughs) But also he's over there. (laughs) I know. I I guessed at the very beginning after chapter one that whoever she was talking to was going to be royalty. Yeah. I I Uh, fucking knew that shit. Oh my gosh. I don't know why. I'm so bad at guessing, but I did a lot of guessing in this book. You did? Yeah, dude. I can't wait to see what I guessed. But, um... I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna fast forward because honestly but that was the main love interest basically so his yes. name is bjorn and we don't know that because he leaves before she um he says his name all that we know is that he rides with jarl which is like the people mm-hmm. and he leaves and she's like okay whatever and then he comes back but he comes back with snorri mm-hmm. who jarl snorri Jarl Snorri, which is uh, the, the main, main dude. Yeah. And then also with Vragi. Because he's like the king, right? Mm-hmm. Of this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Vragi, which the husband. That fucking bitch. And then... But the, the way that this scene played out was kind of confusing because the the dad, Snorri, was like, I want you to fight her. He was telling the, the son, Bjorn. Bjorn, go fight her. And Bjorn was like, um, dad, no. uh, but dada oh my gosh that's his son i hated that it was just so quick mm-hmm. but it was like yeah you have to fight her 
because Vragi is telling you that he doesn't want to be in this marriage anymore. Yeah, so. he wanted to be free of the marriage. And of course, what better way than to just get rid of her? And so they fight. Mm-hmm. And but in- at, at first he he didn't he didn't do it like how do I say it? he wasn't actually fighting her no he was kind of like messing around with her a little bit mm-hmm. but then eventually the dad was like you're not getting out of this this is this is gonna happen either you kill her or I kill her yep and I don't remember how it plays out but he takes out his axe with the fire because mm-hmm. he's a fire god a fire god has blessed him so he has fire yeah i don't i can't remember their names i'm so yeah. sorry but yeah basically that's his ability mm-hmm. and so he brings out this weapon which is gonna fucking kill her so he like is about to strike but she says the name of the goddess who blessed her Mm-hmm. and we find out through this exchange that she is a shield maiden the guardian, and, yeah which basically she can shield any any weapon and it like sends bjorn flying off and it's so fucking funny because the dad's like i fucking knew it i fucking, I fucking, I fucking knew it because even Broggy was like i fucking told you guys i told I you told guys. you i told you this girl was special mm-hmm. i forgot how he figured it out though Oh, he he was spying on her because mm. she she was never allowed to practice her abilities. So she would leave in the middle of the night and then like fight a fucking tree. And then her husband started following her because he mm. was like, this girl ain't cheating on me. I know she's not cheating on, on me. This? <laughs> on all this? On all this? No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> and so he knew because he wa- he spied on her and told this um, Jarl Snorri. And yeah, Dude. but the part, oh my God, because then Vragi was like, you know what? I'm going to go find the live, live the, yeah. the girl that was it live. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go find the girl that your brother wants. You know, your really hot friend. Yeah. And I'm going to like get rid of her basically or hurt him through her. And Freya gets so fucking pissed off, rightfully so, that yeah. she grabs the axe with the fire axe. He fucking throws it at him and kills him. And isn't this fire described as like it doesn't it doesn't turn off, right? Yeah, it doesn't turn off. So it just burned and melted her the the skin on her hand, the flesh on her hand. Yeah, so she's fucked now because yeah. of her hand. She's in a lot of pain, but she's also kind of proud of herself. Dude, she does it. And I, what I really like is throughout this whole book, when that scene is brought up, she's like, don't don't get it twisted. I don't regret it. Yeah. Fuck that man. Yeah. But this isn't this, this. Like, I, I like that that's always her reaction to mm-hmm. this. So she does this and then she tells Snorri that, like, she doesn't want anyone to mess with her brother or live. Mm-hmm. And he's like, then you must then you must come with me. And I think at this point, Snorri asks her to be his wife. Well, he kind of makes it seem like, oh, this was prophesized. This is how I'm going to get all of this power is through the shield maiden because Mm -hmm. now people won't be able to hurt him as easily through her, right? And so I don't remember how he brings it up, but he already has a fucking wife. And then he's like, you're going to be my second wife. Wife too. Look Ooh. one side, look the other side. I got two wives. <laughs> Hell yeah. And he fucking goes home. His wife, Ilva's there. And it's like, me, wife too. This is my main bitch. This- <laughs> and Ilva? also my main bitch, but to the left. <laughs> don't get it twisted. But it's so funny. Because no, he didn't know. No, he did not want to no, be with her. But even at the wedding, they were about to consummate. Do you remember that part? Dude, of course I remember that part. Dude. I was so fucking scared. Me too. I was like, there's no fucking way that she's going to have sex with the father of the man that she's going to end up end up staying with. Right. <laughs> Wait, can I bring something up before yeah. we get to that? Yeah. I thought it was really funny <laughs> that after Vragi died or no, like before he died, um, pre- pre vroggy death how he was bringing up no oh my gosh i'm sorry freya brings up well you were never gonna have kids with me i put lemon down there and that shit and then bjorn is like i wonder how he didn't taste that yeah and she just kind of goes like taste (laughs) she's like (laughs) wait why would why would he taste that why would he put what that's so ungodly (laughs) why would he do that bjorn was just flabbergasted he was like you've never gone what you've never gone down on your wife 
what what does that mean? Kill this man. <laughs> Kill this well, man. He didn't go down on one knee when he proposed. <laughs> and maybe not even then. Yeah. <laughs> and he like he was like, babe, and a fish comes with a <laughs> ring. Yeah, it was not romantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so God, I fucking hate Froggy. Okay, going back to Snorri, what during that wedding, it was more like to appearances. show that he had the power too of the guardian. Yeah, and so he wanted field. to just, you know, have a good appearance because mm-hmm. everybody was aware. He basically introduced her to everyone and yeah. was like, "This is the shield maiden, whatever, whatever." And he was like, "All right, we're going to go consummate the marriage now. Later, losers." Ilva, come come watch. Ella, babe, my main babe, please. <laughs> main babe. Okay. You're going to chaperone. You're going to chaperone basically. <laughs> And so they were going to do it. They yeah, were going to do it. But Ilva? Yeah, Ilva. Con- uh, convinces him not to, right? Because he gets, she gets very like, I can't believe you're going to do this. I can't watch. I thought I could, but I couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so then fucking Freya's like, thank fucking God. <laughs> what are we going to do instead? And it's like, well, you know, we can just pretend. It'll be a secret between all of us. No one has to know. But doesn't she swear something? Yeah, they have a promise that they're never supposed to tell anyone that they did this. And then it's funny because well, they all put their pinkies together and spun all spun around them, in a circle. All three of them's like pinky promise. And then all of a sudden Snorri and Yilva just start going at it. They start having sex. <laughs> and yeah. Freya's like, oh, <laughs> am I? I'll be outside. Yeah, that's my blanket. <laughs> that's a... No, it's okay. No, 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 it's I brought fine. it from home. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, but let's pause here. How are you feeling about Freya so far? I really, really liked her. Mm-hmm. I was just, I think around this part, I started noticing, though, that her emotions are very all over the place. Yeah. She is not one to ever stay calm. She's no. angry all the time. Yeah. The anger is palpable with her. Like, she yeah. is fire, which is so funny because you would think it'd be more Bjorn. Bjorn is so level-headed compared yeah. to her. Yeah, exactly. But, um, I it was kind of hard to read mm-hmm. with her always being angry. Because mm-hmm. she's always like, oh, gosh, I'm never I'm never given anything. This life is so... I, I don't. There's a part where she's just like, I deserve all of this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I still have to protect all these people. But, like, they're not great to me. But, you know, I should still be the better person. Mm-hmm. I couldn't fucking stand that shit. Like, yeah. it felt like any time Bjorn tried to talk to her, it was like talking to a brick wall. Yeah, she doesn't have uh, emotional intelligence. Yeah. Which was hard. But at the same time, I kind of get it because yeah. of the life that she was dealt. Mm-hmm. So for me, I felt... I I just really love the way that Danielle L. Jensen writes because to me, it's so easy to get invested in her books Yeah. so far. I mean, I haven't read all of them, but so far. Mm-hmm. And so I was pretty interested to see where the story was going. But I agree with you, though. Freya was kind of off-putting yeah. at times. Um, how did you feel after... After Snorri and Ilva did the do, she go- he's over here fucking towel around his waist. Uh-huh. And it's like, Bjorn, you have to stick with Freya forever. The whole time. Yeah. And you have to teach her how to fight. Mm-hmm. Counting so, yeah. on you, son. There's no fucking way that he had no idea something was going to happen between them. Come on. You're not that stupid. He Did he ever get it? He didn't, right? He did. At the end. At the end, yeah. But no, not in between. No. Well, maybe he never mentioned it in Mm-mm. between. But, but I feel like this was calculated, in my opinion. But you think so? I don't know because there's know. no way you're not this. You're this dumb. I mean, but Snorri is also just power hungry. That's true. He I is. feel like he doesn't think about it until way later. He's like, "Oh, this bitch, this bitch thinking with his dick." <laughs> Damn, didn't learn that from me, dude. Bjorn is such a flirt. Mm-hmm. I fucking love him mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. Um, he basically teaches her how to use her shield and is with her every freaking second of the day. And it really sucks because like he still kind of flirts with her, but she and he both know that they can't do anything about it because by the gods, she's supposed to be married to Snorri. And also, he thinks that they consummated the marriage, too. Yeah, which he's is just, crazy. Yeah, he's just like, damn, she's my stepmom? 
What? <laughs> Can you imagine if somewhere in this book, like, he just started calling her mom, and then it just flips the entire, like, everything this book was going for, and it's I just mean, found family. some people are, no, some people are into that. No, I don't <laughs> mean it like that. <laughs> um, so It's still found family, though. Yeah, it is found family. Mm. I um, What I really liked about the two of them was that they really connected on the fact that they were so disconnected from their worlds yes like because she didn't know what she was meant to be in this world right and i mean it's kind of weird because everyone has like their fates mapped out except her she does Mm -hmm. not have her fate mapped out and neither does bjorn yeah so both of them are kind of like this big question mark of who knows what's going to happen with you because you have all of this free will but at the same time you know you're meant for something big yep but Bjorn was kind of the same way, way where he had a lot of expectations put on him because mm-hmm. of his father. And he also just felt very left out because Ilva, Ilva? Yeah, Ilva. Ilva really wanted her son to take over the throne after her husband. Mm-hmm. But because Bjorn is the eldest, it was kind of like, no, Bjorn's going to be the one who to take the throne. But yep. will he? I don't know. What was the name? Because wasn't there also in one part of Bjorn's life where he got kidnapped by someone? Yes. He got kidnapped by King Harold. Harold. That was his name. Mm-hmm. I, it was the most basic name out of everyone. That was no, for here. real. But yeah, he got down. kidnapped by him. And while he was kidnapped, I guess his brother, which what was his name again? I don't remember the brother's name. Okay. Well, the brother. Mm hmm. He, I think he started liking the idea of him taking over. Yes. During this why. time. And then also Ilva was like liking this idea as well. So there's so much fucking family drama. Mm-hmm. And then there's Freya over here like, okay, let me go check on my family. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, she like visits her brother and Liv, who she basically gave her whole fucking life for them. To no, live they happy. show up, don't they? They just show up randomly. Oh, they do show up. Because the dad's like, I'm... R-, the dad, hello? The brother's like, I'm ready. I'm going to serve you no matter what you want Snoring. me to do. I will do it. You need someone to hold your hand at night. I'm here, Snorri. And Freya is pissed. Yes. And I was pissed, too, because Dude. the brother and the best friend Liv, mm-hmm. I, it felt like they didn't realize the magnitude of what Freya had to go no. through. There was even a part before that mm-hmm. where Liv had said, like, oh, I can't believe my whole life has changed. And it's like, shut the Your fuck up. Your life has changed? I'm married to an old man. I watched <laughs> him and his wife have sex. Like, Don't even get me started you with that shit. no idea the way that she can bend over backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of proud of her slay, <laughs> but still. Yeah, it, it was so irritating. Like, I... I kind of just wish that her and her brother would have had a better relationship because it seemed like they did because they were super close when they were young. Mm -hmm. And we learned later on that Freya was aware that she had a goddess's blood in her because she, she, you know, she um, conjured Mm -hmm. this shield when she was playing with her brother one day when they were children. And then her parents got super scared and they were like, never, ever say that goddess's name ever again. No one can ever know. Mm-hmm. of this right and the brother it kind of seemed like they just kind of stuck by with each other yeah they were like each other's best friends but then we find out that the bitch the brother told Liv of her power of her ability which they were supposed to take take it to the grave and i didn't like the fact too that the brother he was just jealous like he because he had gotten hurt i don't remember what had happened to him but he had gotten hurt because of ragi and um oh he, it's because he got punished for keeping her a secret remember mm-hmm. and so you would think that after all that she did for him he would be very grateful kind but loving instead, he sweet was like, he was calling her a slut mm-hmm. he was saying that he deserved uh, everything she was going through which was like being the right hand girl to snorri mm-hmm I loved him. Yeah. It was me. It was supposed to be me. I was supposed to be wife too. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, it was just so much hatred mm-hmm. and I couldn't. I, I couldn't, couldn't either. It it was disappointing, honestly. I, I wanted more for them. Mm-hmm. 
And how did you feel about her relationship with her mom? I was thinking about that too, but that's kind of jumping forward. But that's fine. We could talk about it. I hated the mom. The mom was so kind of similar to the brother yeah. where they both don't understand that Fre- Freya is going through so much. You mm-hmm. know, her world is like fucking tilting. Like her whole like life is being planned out by this fucking bitch Snorri. Yep. And she, it, she's making these sacrifices so her family can be safe. Mm-hmm. So she goes to visit her mom to kind of get like answers on what the hell what blood is inside of her yep. and the mom kind of just treats her like i don't know i don't know how to describe it she's very Shit. apathetic and it's her mom even shares the story can i say that one yeah go ahead um how when when her brother was young he got really sick mm-hmm. and they had prayed to gods they were trying medicines they did everything to make sure that he was he would get better but he didn't and he was going to die so then she uh was with her husband and they were really defeated and this lady comes and knocks at their door and is like <laughs> I hear you want a healthy baby. Yeah. I could help you. And it's like, yeah, we'll do anything. It's like, okay, you need to fuck your husband and I'm going to watch, bitch. (laughs) Oh, my God. And they go at it. And it's so funny because the way it it describes it after, it's like both of them are tired as if they just worked. Yeah. And I'm just like, damn. And and A whole nine to five? That's crazy. (laughs) And it's funny because um, the goddess that watched, she just leaves. And they're like, Mm -hmm. was is that that just a stranger like what was that and then the next day um someone i think that same goddess comes and is like you need to give me the baby you have in your stomach excuse me wait i'm I'm pregnant (laughs) i was like wait i wanted to do a gender reveal Mm -hmm. but yeah but then um the brother's better and um freya learns this and is like it's all right, mom. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It's like you're you don't like hate me because like I literally was gonna give you up for your brother. <laughs> no, and she's like no, it's cool, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it, she mom. literally. Oh, she was so I don't know. She didn't give have, a fuck about her. And then when she left with um Bjorn, and came back with Bjorn, and I'll talk about why they left later. Um, they had seen that the mother was being held hostage i guess yeah kind of like a she was about to be attacked pretty much she was being interrogated yes because they were searching for freya they were like where the fuck is she you know where she went and she was kind of like not giving it up no she did but she gave it up easily she did yeah because she basically was like okay she's here she left at this time this is what we talked about that's all that happened i could have sworn it like took a (laughs) i could have sworn it was like a. they weren't even there yet and she was already (laughs) she's over there oh i you know what i remember now because freya wanted to save her Mm -hmm. but then when she gave it up she kind of stopped right she stopped and then she saw them walking away and i freya wasn't mad because she was like oh good that they that she did that because i didn't want anything to happen to my mom but then these people turn around and like just throw a knife at her Mm -hmm. it's like that's for being a bad mother bitch no one gives up their kids that easily it's like it's like wait what (laughs) wait wait did you just kill my mom so wait wait wait, hold on (laughs) did you just kill my mom for me (laughs) wait bjorn did you see that (laughs) i think i'm gonna go with them actually (laughs) dude but it's just everyone in her fucking life sucks Mm -hmm. i wish there had been one just one Mm -hmm. but no no literally everybody so why what was happening before they met the mom though they were going on a bit of a trip no yeah so in order to explain that let's explain the relationship between um freya and bjorn okay so like i said um 60 percent of this book is a bjorn freya training sesh it's just her trying Mm -hmm. to learn um tactical fighting yeah and he's really hard on her because he's trying to push her he's like you never know what if we get separated what if something happens to you i need you to be able to defend yourself i love i love um like princess guard type relationships Mm -hmm. i fucking love that shit yeah so i love that he's always fucking there but he's also a prince so yeah 
I know, but he's just so good at being a guard. I, I wonder if he would consider like a career Which, change. I think she would be the guard. <laughs> <laughs> Technically. But she doesn't know shit. So she's over here learning from the fucking basics. Mm -hmm. But there's just like some heat between them. And Freya's like, oh, I know I shouldn't, but he like gets me. Like no one gets me like Bjorn gets it's me. It's kind of crazy how much lust there is. You think? I think so, because she kind of lusted over him pretty quickly, knowing would, that that's the son of the man you're married to. I would think that because she had such a disgusting um, experience with sex, that she'd be more asexual. Really? I would think I so. wouldn't. I would be like... Mm. I need someone to fix the last the last experience I had ASAP. Can you imagine if they had like sex for the first time? She like opens her leg and a fucking lemon comes out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Old my habits. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I just put it in there. My bad. <laughs> no, but um, I think the first moment that there's like a little bit of something between them is um when they're visiting a place that is not safe and bjorn freya and ilva go to sleep in this one room ilva leaves and it's funny because at this point wait can you say that again that they're in a room okay so there's a point where bjorn freya and ilva are staying in a room because they're visiting this kingdom mm -hmm. i think it's harold's kingdom mm -hmm. and that's where uh freya learns like oh yeah this bitch kidnapped bjorn by the way and so she's like, hmm, it's just really sus that Ilva's leaving, even though they told us to stay in our rooms. I wonder why she would do that. She leaves mm. like in the middle of the night. Yeah. Mm. So then um, Freya turns around and she's looking at the other bed and it's Bjorn and she fucking starts touching herself. Yeah. She like starts like masturbating because she's thinking about him. But doesn't Bjorn leave also? He gets up. And she's not even done. She's like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, give, give me two more minutes. Gets the lemon. Wait, <laughs> knocks, <laughs> knocks him out with the lemon. <laughs> but oh God, he leaves. I thought he left because he heard her. I did too. That's what I assumed. I was like, damn, he's embarrassed. He's embarrassed. Why though? <laughs> but he leaves, and she leaves too, and he. We find out, or no. They, they both leave. And so then Freya starts walking around and she finds Ilva talking to someone and they mention. Doesn't she hear a woman's voice? Oh, we don't know if it's Ilva or not. She thinks it's Ilva. But it's a woman's voice that's basically like giving information about Snorri. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, why would Ilva <laughs> do that? <laughs> Doesn't yeah. even sound like her at all. I know. <laughs> She's like, why would Ilva betray her husband like that? And then Bjorn comes from behind and covers her mouth and is like, why the fuck are you here? Uh -huh. Like, it's so unsafe for you to be out right now. And it's like, bitch, you're out. Yeah. Like, well, they, they're really overprotective over her because she's a shield maiden. Yeah. Like, they don't want anyone mm -hmm. to have an advantage by taking her. So they are trying to go back to the room, I believe. And there are guards passing by. Yeah. And they decide in order to to look to blend in, to blend in basically with this, their surroundings that they should just make out with each other. Yeah. And so she's facing him and he's facing outwards to like the audience and she has a hood on and someone's some man just walks by. And is like, hey, Bjorn. Hey, hey, how you doing? Is it the same girl from yesterday? Wait, can, I, can I see her? I'm just kidding. He <laughs> didn't fail. But can you imagine if he would have said something like oh. that? Like another girl. Another girl. Damn. Oh, dude. And she had to like hella play it up uh -huh. and was like hella talking dirty. And it's like, <laughs> bitch, <laughs> I can't. And, as, and he was super into it too. Mm -hmm. At least it seemed like it. But after it was done, he was like, yeah, work. Am I right? That's crazy. <laughs> Okay, guess I'll see you later. <laughs> but she was, after that, the relationship was never the same mm -hmm. because she was like, there, there had to be something. There yeah. had to be. Yeah. You don't kiss someone like that and then not feel anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe his dad doesn't have to know. Maybe my husband doesn't have to know. That's crazy because, I mean, Snorri wasn't really like, was, he wasn't really around her in a way that that you would be like oh yeah that's her husband you know what i was waiting for because mm. there was one point what? where after that kiss had happened they had went to go 
to one of a place that Harold had control over and they raided King Harold, it. right? Yeah, and they raided it. And even before the raid, uh there was a character whose name was Bodil. Bodil uh who was very good at finding truths and lies who pulled Freya and is like, "Hey, I really really like you and I want to know how do you feel about us doing this raid?" Mhm. And she was like, well, we're supposed to, aren't we? Like, we're the good guys, so why not? And Bodil's like, Mm-mm, that's not the right answer. That You don't believe that. Yeah. And so then they kind of... First of all, I would hate to talk to someone like this. I'd be like, if you already know if I'm lying or not, why am I... Why? Why would I say anything? <laughs> it's funny. You go up to Bodil like, hey, how are you? You don't mean that. Okay. okay. You don't actually care. No, yeah. No, Please walk away. No, yeah. I, <laughs> I no, you won't. <laughs> like, okay, I'll stay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just a never-ending loop. But um, I really, really like Bodil because it mm-hmm. seemed like all of her... Everything she did was for the Shield Maiden. So everything she yeah. did was for Freya. And she was a very trusted ally. And then also, doesn't she begin to train her as well? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's the first um woman companionship that Freya has that mm-hmm. is genuine. Yeah. And so, and it's funny because Bjorn is like, hmm, I don't like her that much. She's yeah. okay, I guess. She's always trying to see if I'm telling the truth or not. And I don't like that. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm lying. Ve- I would never lie. I'm very honest, actually. <laughs> but it's it's interesting, though, because the first time that Bjorn talks to Bodil, it's when they're all, um, them two and Freya are all sitting together and he immediately leaves mm-hmm. and it's i'm just gonna say it's assumed at this time because even bodil says it, it's like mm, he's got a thing for you I see yeah it. Mm-hmm. see it i see it in the way his eyes glisten mm-hmm. and that's all it, it kind of is at that point so the raid happens and they get there and freya's like wow they're not doing anything like these people were about to attack there's women and children here mm-hmm. and they're not doing anything but they attack anyway and um freya this is like her first big battle there had been battles before this but not at this magnitude Mm -hmm. and so she puts up her shield and starts running forward with all of the troops and for a second she trips and the shield comes down Mm -hmm. and she just starts to see bloodshed like she's looking at all of her people fall Mm -hmm. and one of the people she sees fall is bodil that part was so sad I was like, of course it would be Bodil. Yeah. The and one I f- I feel like they should have kind of made their relationship stronger be- like before too. getting rid of my girl. It didn't because I read this in one go. It didn't feel like she was in the book that long. Mm-hmm. No, she wasn't. Right. So when she was gone, Freya like was so shocked, but she put her shield back up. And then Bjorn was like, hey, look at me. Look at me. You're here. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I'm going to kill these fucking bitches. And she goes off. She goes a little bit unhinged. Mm -hmm. And the main person they were trying to kill, she was going after him. And um, the person who ended up killing this guy was Bjorn. Mm -hmm. And I forget the way it's described, but it was basically to Freya an unsatisfying kill. Like, yeah. it should have been longer. It should have been more yeah. painful. Mm-hmm. And Like, it was too quick, basically. And Bjorn was like, this isn't you. Like, look at what you're doing. Look at me, Freya. Babe, <laughs> like, normally, I'm the one who's violent. Right here, Beba. <laughs> you and Mia. <laughs> so she, she's, like, completely out of it. Mm-hmm. And it isn't until after where they figure out there's, like, this person who can basically like show your memories Mm -hmm. and he shows the memory of that raid the singer no yes the one who does like oh my god there's like a a word for them barb the barb the one who sings songs bard kind of like beowulf you know what i mean it's like you're you're retelling the events of Mm -hmm. of what happened but it's kind of like an enchantment it's enchanted because then you can see like like you said like you can see the memories of it and freya didn't want to watch it back but when she did because 
Bjorn was like, you need to see what happened. Mm -hmm. She sees herself not act like herself. Yeah. And she says that she notices the moment Bjorn looks at her and doesn't see her anymore. She's like, damn, I kind of slayed a little bit. I kind of <laughs> I and it's like, slayed. Bjorn looks over to her. He's like, maybe she'll regret it. And she's like, damn. <laughs> Wait, I've never looked so and hot. Swipes? Oh, my gosh. So mo- these moments when she kind of like loses herself a little bit, it's in fits of rage. Yes. And she has a couple of them. A lot of them. Yeah. It kind of surprised me a little bit. I, I mean... It surprised me because she wouldn't really remember it. And for me, yes, she didn't remember it. But for me, for someone who was so complacent with her life, it it was very out of character to see her like this for me. Okay. Because why did she never let the show ever? I think because now she kind of had an ability to show it. Like before she couldn't, Mm -hmm. what's she going to do? Fight her husband? I woulda. Well, I mean, she killed him, so... <laughs> well, yeah, because... No, I know what you mean, though. She was kind of pushed to the breaking point. Because now she was the shield maiden. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just... It felt weird to me. I kind of like those moments, though. Can I just say, I just love the... um, What is the, na- the name? The female rage? Yeah. Feminine rage? Female rage. I don't know if it's feminine or female. One of them. It's a lot. It's true rage. Yeah, for real. And, um... Bjorn just kept telling her, like, you aren't this, but you're becoming it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then he reveals, like, my mom, bless her heart, my mom, <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> uh, she told me when when uh, she was still alive that I was going to meet you one day and you were going to be the ruin of all of these people. Mm-hmm. And Freya already felt that because after that vision was shown, mm-hmm. um, she saw that everyone didn't approach her anymore or like they threaten treated- anymore because yeah. they were scared of her. Yeah. So the way that people treated her was completely different. And so he was like, You could you could lead for all for all I care through fear, like how my dad wants you to, like your husband. Who you consummated with? (laughs) (laughs) Your husband, my father. (laughs) Who was married to my mother, bless her heart. (laughs) And now married to my stepmother. I know. Bless her heart. (laughs) And my other stepmother, bless your heart. But (laughs) you can do stepmoms. Wait, hold on. Stepmoms in my life. What's crazy? (laughs) Um (laughs) he has a mommy kink. I know. (laughs) I hate it. Okay, but he's like, you can lead that way Uh for all I care. But I know you. And if we run away together, if ah, you and I. Wait, what? If you and me, mom, go. <laughs> By the way, I'm totally kidding. I don't think he has a mommy cake. No, he doesn't. Just because, like, just because I don't want people to listen to this and be like, hell yeah, that's the shit I want. <laughs> like halfway through the book, where the fuck is the mommy king? He has no mommy king. No, he doesn't. Zero out of five. <laughs> no, he doesn't, but. But I mean, he could have. Come on. Stay tuned for the next book, maybe. <laughs> but. At this point, there's like a little bit of romance between them, but every time it's about to go farther and he's like, let's just run away together and let's form our own lives. Mm -hmm. um, She says no. She says no because she feels like she has this duty Mm -hmm. to complete. So then um, I assumed that after this fight and after that vision was showed, I thought Snorri was going to be like, that's my fucking wife. Fuck you, Ilva. (laughs) I thought he was going to consummate finally. Uh, and I was, I was going to. That's what you thought was going to happen? Yeah. Okay. Is that what you wanted to happen? No. But okay. I thought that's where the book was going to go. And then Ilva was going to become like a fucking. Like a bigger traitor deal. And a traitor. Mm-hmm. But. Well, we, we kind of thought she was going to be a traitor because that's what the main character thought. And the biggest part that that kind of pushed us to all believe that was at this one point where she was meant to get more information about her background from her mom and no one wanted her to go except for ilva and ilva was like i'll just tell our um, our husband i'll, I'll tell our, our hubby um, <laughs> our hubs <laughs> i'll tell our mans that, um, <laughs> oh my god that you're gonna go out to visit your mom uh-huh. and um you can take bjorn with you and so her and bjorn go <laughs> and, and that's when they have the whole conversation with the mom yes and then all of a sudden, and those people mother, come. Mother's dead. Yeah. Mother. But um, 
that's when the people come and at that point freya's like oh my god ilva fucking sold us out she was the only other person who knew and then bjorn's like okay be rational babe mom be rational <laughs> be rational look at me please <laughs> no she dude she just jumps off that cliff starts running on water to get back <laughs> she's she is fueled see, by anger she's seeing red yeah she's ready to end oh my god mm -hmm. i was so just something about that anger really got me mm -hmm. and it kind of took me out i was like okay. that's too much yeah <laughs> you need to listen bjorn's mm -hmm. just running by babe <laughs> He's like swimming though because he can't run on water. <laughs> but I think by the <laughs> <laughs> You said run on water. Fucking like lasses are just falling off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Not at all what happened, but <laughs> we're just trying to keep it spicy. <laughs> so after she runs in. <laughs> um, I do want to say by this point, her and Bjorn are a couple but yes. it's very he, he he has like these moments where he's like it's only between us babe it's only between us mm -hmm. and then like a few chapters will pass and he's like i just can't just keep it between us yeah i have to let these feelings show and it's like bitch you told me yesterday mm -hmm. that it was fine so it's just it it flip-flops a lot mm -hmm. but he's over here chasing her trying to get there first and she runs in snores there and Ilva's there, and he's like, that bitch is a traitor. Yeah. She's a traitor. And Ilva's over here fucking enjoying her dinner. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, you told them. Imagine she's like, how is your mom? It's like, she's fucking dead, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she's gone. And it's all because of you. Yeah. I thought we would be sister wives. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is literally why she hates her though, because she's upset that her mother's gone and she thinks that Ilva betrayed betrayed them, sold them yes. out. But Ilva's just like uh was not me. Calm down. And also another indicator that she wasn't a traitor was that Bodil never said she was a traitor. Yeah. And Bodil wouldn't have lied about that. Yeah. But we assume that she did, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. So then <laughs> the red is gone fucking <laughs> the red in her eyes <laughs> bjorn on the floor with the lasso <laughs> no but the, the red is gone and bjorn's just like i, I fucking told you mm -hmm. but whatever and the people that were chasing her end up coming to the kingdom right yes and so then they have to run to, mm -hmm. in order to protect the shield maiden and her and Bjorn, I don't remember the, the sequence of events, but they jump down like a waterfall, don't they? Yeah. And don't they end up going somewhere that was meaningful to him? It's like a cave. I yeah. Remember. Nice little cave with a little oh. bed. <laughs> <laughs> and a sign, I love mom. <laughs> Stop. But, um, it was like a safe haven for him. Um, And yeah, they kind of have a moment together. Well, they have a long moment together. <laughs> because like throughout this story... <laughs> Throughout this story, when they talk and when they're finally together, she uh, will tell Bjorn, like, I, I can't run away with you. You know I can't. You know I can't. Mm -hmm. But at this Stop, moment. Stop. You know I can't. Stop. Her mallet doesn't hand. <laughs> Stop. Stop. You're grounded. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Your dad would be really disappointed in you. But because they finally have a moment alone, they... Away from the chaos. They finally have sex mm -hmm. and she reveals that she never consummated the marriage mm -hmm. when she broke her promise mm -hmm. crazy wait can i just say wasn't it like at this point not not this exact point but before this point didn't she realize that she was kind of like overtaken by her anger yes wasn't there like a like a moment where she was like damn i did that that's crazy <laughs> couldn't be me but it was it <laughs> She's like, Sorry. no but even bjorn tells her like i know how that feels because me too <laughs> because <laughs> yeah i get angry sometimes too i'm like er, i don't kill people but like no but he <laughs> says something about like when you have a god blessing mm -hmm. you can hear them yeah and mm -hmm. that's what she hears she'll hear like no don't listen to him he's lying to you but yeah. hers feels stronger than his does yeah, because there's more anger in hers. But then also she, he had more training. Mm -hmm. So um, so yes, then they have sex in this cave. And it's beautiful. Uh -huh. um, don't remember the spice at all. I'll be honest. I think I, I remember liking it, but I don't mm. really remember specifics either. 
so then afterwards they're kind of laying there and she's like what type of life are we gonna live like what what's what comes next what's our vibe (laughs) and then she's like because i can never imagine bjorn just being a simple guy but Mm -hmm. he's like whatever you want to do we'll do i don't know how to gut a fish but i'll learn for you i'll Mm -hmm. learn how to farm too and i'll learn how to cook and i'll learn all this stuff and it's so sweet yeah but real fucking sweet but i i just want (laughs) to say i fucking knew I fucking knew where this shit was going. It's funny because it was sweet and I looked at the amount of pages left and I was like, mm, no, 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 something's wrong. Yeah. It can't be that good. Mm-hmm. I knew as well. And I texted you. I sent you an audio note before the reveal and after the reveal. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Because they were hiding. And then the next day when they woke up, and she, uh, she wakes up. She sees Bjorn. I-, I think she sees Bjorn talking to Harold, right? Mm-hmm. King Harold. King Harold, yeah. And she's like, oh my gosh, King Harold here. I'm ready to fight or whatever. She was getting ready. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, wait, wait, wait. Freya, Freya, stop. Put the knife down. Mom. Meet, meet dad. dad. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking knew you were going to say that. I was like, no. Isn't this the guy that kidnapped you and killed your mom? You mean the man that raised me? The man that made me the man I am today? My beautiful dad? Oh my gosh, this guy just loves parents. He has an abundance of them, apparently. And then Freya's like, no, I don't understand. He killed your mom. And I forget the way that King Harold says it, but he's basically like, I knew you were going to try to what does he say he says something like i knew you were gonna back out from our plan yes Mm -hmm. yes and then that's where she's like i don't understand what you're doing it's like no you don't get it king harold my dad he never killed my mom he protected her Mm -hmm. my mom's still alive and she would love to meet you by the way i have three moms (laughs) (laughs) and so you need to understand snorri's the one who's bad Mm -hmm. and she's like no you lied to me Mm -hmm. and He's just like, I mean, yeah, but also no. But baby, mom. We can still have the life together. Yeah. But first. But first, you got to go. And also, we're kind of taking you. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. And so they take her and she now has to work under King Harold. Mm -hmm. The end. I feel really sad because (laughs) I feel like the ending was so fucking cliched. And I was so disappointed. Like, mm-hmm. I fucking knew. I knew he was going to betray her because the whole uh-huh. time she thought it was Ilva who was fucking, fucking shit up for her. Yep. But I knew. I was like, no, it's Bjorn. It has to be Bjorn because <gasps> something's up that she's not saying. And just when I finished this book, because mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, I loved reading it. Mm-hmm. But then when I finished it, I was like, what did I just read? Mm-hmm. I remember the beginning of the book and the ending of the book. Mm hmm. What the fuck was everything else? Yeah. I feel like this story was so long-winded and just constantly seeing Freya's angry spells. Just, I wasn't fucking there for that. Mm-hmm. And it it took me a while to get through this book, not because I didn't like the writing, because I do. It's mm-hmm. Danielle L. Jensen. I love her writing. Mm-hmm. But I just wasn't feeling it. And mm-hmm. it wasn't even the Norse mythology thing. I didn't mind that, but yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, I still don't understand mm. whose power she has. Me because neither. I also didn't like that they kind of try to play it off like, ooh, she has two different goddesses' blood in yeah. her. But they try to make it seem like, no, she doesn't. You know, like, I don't know. Mm. Like, it was supposed to be like a big reveal, but it was obvious because she had two different marks. Yeah. But then when they revealed who. I'm gonna be honest. I have no fucking but idea. But does who that it was. mean that she can do more than just a shield? Yeah, I think so. You're right. I assumed that whatever other thing wasn't it tied to her anger. Isn't that why she was so angry all the time? Maybe. But I'm not 100 percent sure what it means yet. And mm. I mean, even though I wasn't, because I still liked the book. I still yeah. enjoyed it. I feel like, like Chelly said, Danielle L. Johnson has. A way of writing that can grip me, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, 
plot itself, though, kind of disappointed me. But I'm yeah. still willing to read the next book oh, because because I want to know what the hell is going to happen next with our girl Freya. Mm-hmm. I um, I'm a little sad that Snorri kind of was just there. Yeah, I thought he would have been a more impactful character. It kind of felt like Ilva was the one who was calling the shots yep. with him, which was. I mean, not that I, I saw that I don't like that idea. Mm-hmm. I do like it, but I kind of wish that he would have done something more, I guess, meaningful. Yeah. I don't know. How did you feel that um, Bjorn really had like a I don't give a fuck attitude throughout most of the book? I I feel like I remember feeling really bad for him because of the way that he was treated by yeah. his dad and his stepmom Ilva. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of understood that. And it, that's why I think that's why it also wasn't shocking to me that he ended up betraying them yeah. because why the fuck would he stay there when neither parent really cares for him? Mm-hmm. And I mean also his dad was kind of treating him like I don't know, I guess disposable. Yep. And yeah, I don't know how they He was just expected. a weapon. He was just a weapon for them because of his power. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. There's no way they should expect his loyalty after being Mm -hmm. fucked around like that. Exactly. (sighs) But now I'm curious to see. I I think his brother is probably going to play a bigger role in the next book. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I don't really know what to think about King Harold. Me neither. But then also, I don't see Freya forgiving him that easily. No, I mean, she's either. such an angry person. Seriously, yeah. So that's not gonna hit too quickly. Like, because I think about the Bridge Kingdom and the big betrayal. A slow burn. It was a slow burn, but it was like a. I understood the time, the mm-hmm. timing mm-hmm. for this one. I feel like it's gonna take her five bucks longer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> for her to even consider, like, maybe he could be my son again. <laughs> Stop! I don't, I don't know. Sun as in like soul, like in the sky. It's also, sun like I no, want to play catch. Catch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The fact that was so weird that she married his dad. Because I also, was it? I also assumed that the dad was going to be like, wait, why don't you marry my son? <laughs> wait. It never said you had to consummate with me. What if it's just my blood that consummate? Mm. I thought th- that I thought was, was never going to use something. That like was that. never a thought, though. Do you he think he had that- no thoughts? Do that you story? Th- nah, I felt like he was on fucking knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> <laughs> he was close. Do you think that's a reason why he never considered the the idea of Freya marrying his son Bjorn was because maybe that would be also too cliched? Yeah, probably right. Yeah, but I don't know. How did you feel when um, Snorri was like, I knew you liked her. I knew you liked I her. I saw the way you were staring at her. I get well, it. My wife's hot. <laughs> well, I'm kind of glad he said something because I was worried that he was going to say nothing at all the entire book. Mm-hmm. Because this man can't be that blind, right? Yep. These two were literally like eye fucking each other. <laughs> but he's also like legally blind. <laughs> this man's just old as fuck. No, seriously. <laughs> but... No, yeah. Mm-hmm. I um I think this isn't one of Daniel L. Jensen's best books. Mm-hmm. But I I would still read the second one, but overall, I don't know. I it was kind of forgettable for me. Okay. I I Sounds know fair. enough. Yeah. But um I think I would give this like a 2.8. Okay, I was kind of feeling around the same. Yeah. I think I would give it like a 3 though. Because I, I feel like I was still invested enough in the mm. story. And I did I did really love Bjorn. Yeah. And I thought that they were really cute together. I just kind of wish that the ending would have been better. I don't know what to expect for the second book, though. Me neither. So I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. But I don't know how long it's going to take her to write the second one. This is the first time we're waiting for a Daniel L. Jensen book. Mm-hmm. So. Normally, they're just falling on our laps. But... <laughs> Now we have to wait, but I'm excited either way. Yeah, me too. Do you have anything else you want to say about this book? No, but leave leave comments down below (laughs) about your thoughts on this book. If you've read it, if you haven't read it, let us know if you're planning on reading it. How do you feel about Bjorn having three moms? Oh my God. (laughs) 
for anyone who's listening to us in audio form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on. Thank you so much. If you can please leave a rating of five stars because it's so easy to leave that rating. You can do it right now. It takes two seconds. And it really helps us out so much. I think that the more that people rate us, the more likely we are to be, you know, in other people's feeds. Yes. And if you want to leave a review recommending us a book, that would also be great because we take our reviews very seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, If you want to support us and you have a little bit of money what can they do so we do have a patreon and at the moment it really just serves as a way for our listeners to let us know that you really enjoy our content you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix but if you don't want the commitment of monthly you can find us on coffee which is ko-fi.com slash the book fix or buymeacoffee.com slash the book fix perfect if you are watching us on youtube thank you so much if you can like comment subscribe and hit that notification bell because we post every tuesday and thursday and we also have really funny shorts on there if you can interact with those (laughs) so great um if you want to support us and want to follow us on social media we do have an instagram and a thread at the book fix pod t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x-p-o-d we also have a tiktok and a goodreads at the book fix t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x thank you um why don't we go ahead and read a positive and negative review of this book all right you want to read i'll read positive my review comes from elizabeth they gave it one out of five and they wrote If your story supposedly takes place in Viking era Norway, why are your characters using terms that didn't pop up until the 1850s? You cannot be serious using the term endgame mid book. It's like the author kind of knew how the vernacular was supposed to sound like by watching a bunch of middle tier, low budget period dramas and then shoving modern day slang in there to make it relatable. Honestly, it was disjointed. I was constantly brought out of the story. Typically, I'm a sucker for any sort of myth inspired tale, but I didn't feel magically transported to a thrilling Viking adventure with old Norse gods knocking about. Just how many times do you have to have characters saying fuck or some variation upon that? The romance was so predictable, but what else can you expect from a romanticy nowadays? Also, the big reveal at the end wasn't truly a big reveal if anyone read the book with their eyes open. This felt more like a high school school oh my god. This felt more like a high schooler's Wattpad story that somehow ended up printed and bound and on my doorstep. Book of the month, you traitor. I will not forget this transgression against me. Damn. This comes from Jillian, who gave it a five out of five. Um, starting off with a quote from the book, you are mine, born in fire, even if only the two of us know it. I absolutely love this book. This was an epic and fantastic Norse inspired romanticy full of betrayal, battles, magic, forbidden love, fate, and more. This book has everything I love in fantasy romance, including forbidden love, slow burn, one horse, which didn't know that was a trope, magic, amazing chemistry between the main characters and more. I fell in love with this enchanting world and the characters from the very beginning. I was so completely transported into this world that I experienced every event and feeling through the characters that the characters felt as if they were my own. The world building was excellent. The Norse inspired world was crafted so well. And I love learning about the gods, magic, people, and culture. The writing was so descriptive and beautiful. I felt that every word had purpose. This book reminded me why I fell in love with reading and brought me to my happy place there were several betrayals that left me shocked and heartbroken this is one of my favorite books of the year the world the characters and the writing have my heart the ending was so exciting and shocking i can't wait to read the next book this is another quote i'll let my i'll let the past burn to ash freya because you are my present my future my destiny thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time Bye. bye It feels, every time we let go of a big book, uh-huh. it feels like I've taken a stone off of my back. <laughs> like, give me another. That's seriously what I was thinking, too. Oh, my God. Give me another. That's Thor. <gasps> Norse mythology. Another. <laughs> Norse mythology is a full circle. Um, Bring out Odin. <laughs> uh, where was Loki, though? That's my question. Well, he'll be in the next one. He will. I know it. Was he? He told me. He told you himself? Oh my god, I didn't know you. Oh my god, I don't remember the name of the actor. Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. (laughs) 